everyone, and welcome to session three of the Global Black Feminist Reading Circle. My name is Randy Henderson, and I am one of the Black Feminist Reading Circle members of this online group. This session runs from January 20th until June 2nd and includes two week long breaks. Our democratically selected reading material is Harriet A. Washington's book, Medical Apartheid, The Dark History of Medical Experimentation on Black Americans from Colonial Times to the Present. Our book group meets each Tuesday evening from 6.30 to 8 on the Google Plus Hangouts on Air platform. You may find the, Glo the Global Black Feminist Reader Circle on Google Plus, YouTube, and Facebook. And always feel free to join us in reading our story together. Hello everyone and welcome to the Global Black Feminist Reading Circle. My name is Michelle Oda. I'm one of the co-hosts of the circle and I'm located in Brooklyn, New York. I invite you to learn more about the Global Black Feminist Reading Circle at our main page on Google Plus or on our Facebook group page. Uh, or by visiting YouTube where all of our videos are housed and there are a lot of them. And this session runs through June 16th, so we are coming on down the road. This session we are reading Harriet A. Washington's Medical Apartheid. The Dark History of Medical Experimentation on Black Americans from Colonial Times to the Present. And tonight we are on Chapter 14, The Machine Age, African American Martyrs to Surgical Technology. And actually, Randy Henderson is going to be moderating tonight, but she won't be here until about 7. Tell, yes. us, who you, tell us who you are. Uh, my name is uh, Joel. I'm calling from, um, hailing you from Charleston, South Carolina. Yes, the infamous North Charleston, South Carolina. <laughs> Thank you. And Edwina? Um, my name is Edwina, and I'm calling you from um, Utah, the infamous red state of uh the Mormons and the Navajo Indians. <laughs> and you're looking wow. rather cute tonight. And Georgette? I'm Georgette Moses, and I'm participating from Columbia, South Carolina. Okay, and Kim? Hi, I'm Kim, and I'm calling from New York. And I'm Walker, and I'm um, joining you from Connecticut. Welcome. Okay. Hi, my name is Randy. I'm supposed to be moderating tonight. <laughs> but I hope that everybody are, um, is enjoying the question so far. But my name is Randy and I'm watching from Atlanta. Chapter 14, The Machine Age, African American Martyrs to Surgical Technology tells the story of medical experimentation with artificial hearts, artificial blood, and other surgical instruments, and how African Americans tend not to benefit from this research for which their bodies have been used and abused, often without their knowledge or consent, to the same extent as do white Americans. This chapter focused on the lives of patients at the mercy of a bio core doctors and scientists like William Osler Abbott, Hans Zinser, George Gay, and Harry Bailey. The central theme of this chapter was that these corporations, scientists, and doctors alike sought out the use of black bodies for their experiments when, if successful, would not benefit black Americans or be affordable to them. Perhaps the most heart-wrenching aspect of this chapter is that many of the experiments were, of course, unsuccessful. Patients at the mercy 
of a biopore never survived longer than two years. And other black people used by William Osler Abbott, Hans Ginzer, George Gay, and Harry Bailey rarely, if ever, received informed consent. These African Americans were also thought of as animals and were coerced by dreams of profit, life, and sleep to engage in dangerous and fatal experiments. Let me read number three. A bio court also took a step that escalates the ethical debate. It asked the FDA to approve the experimental implantation of artificial hearts without the informed consent of the patient. The company wished to expand its pool of subjects by widening the experimental criteria to include patients who suffer massive heart attacks, even if they are unconscious or otherwise unable to consent. The AbioCore company said it will encourage patients to select a healthy proxy who is usually but not always a relative to offer consent on the part of the patient. The FDA denied AbioCore's request, but why do you think AbioCore was so insistent on implanting patients with this fake heart without their consent. Could the only reason be that they knew they still needed to make strides with the heart and they needed people to experiment on? Yeah. How many more years of these experiments based on what we know of the side effects would a successful implantation take? I don't know. <laughs> um, it's all science fiction to me. It yeah. sounds like something you read in it. You, you know, you read in a comic book. Yeah, yeah, but in terms of why they were were so insistent on uh, on bypassing the issue of of consent, I mean, if you just listen to all of our responses here tonight about if we knew, you know, the truth about what to expect, would we choose the experimental surgery or, or uh, let nature take its course? And we all said, let nature take its course. Yeah. And so I imagine that uh, a biocore was finding that honesty was creating some crimps in their plans and uh, you know that they were having difficulty recruiting people and so you know and and so they wanted to skip it because that would make life easier for them well, and, I, and I, as I, Harriet pointed out you know the researchers are interested in the research and not your life so um, and the FDA denied it but I think it what was it, 2004, I think, when they denied it. And they had been doing this. They had been doing the experiment for several years, yeah. And mm -hmm. so the FDA only denied it after some white folks, that's how I read it, after some white folks started dying. <laughs> but one thing I think that she does in this chapter um She's she's talked about informed consent yeah. throughout the book, but I think in this chapter she really kind of goes at it hard um, because I think that she wants 
us the reader and you know and I think actually I think that her real audience is is medical researchers um, and I think that what she's really trying to say to them is you know, you you claim you can't find blacks to be involved in experiments because black people are so scared from what happened at Tuskegee, and that's a bunch of BS. And I'm going to show you why. I think that's really who she's talking to, but and she's she's pointing out their own ethical breaches. But you know, if we just if we think about the issue generally of consent, like if you, you think about it in terms of um, rape, you know, it, you know, and imagine that, you know, a, a, a person is, has been seduced by some kind of drug or something and they're unconscious and then they get raped, you know, and we would all think it was a horrible thing and these were horrible people that had done this because how, you know, how can you do that to somebody when they're unconscious? And I think that Harriet really is trying to get us to see that in numerous ways our power to our authority over our own lives um, is, is being usurped by this whole um, research process and really you know so in this in this chapter I think she really was trying to to get us to think about that in particular I mean just think about that you're laying there now these are not even you know when we when we get to talking about the blood later on which is you know a horrific thing but the, at least in that situation you, you you came in through the emergency room a heart patient is not necessarily coming through the emergency room like like you're talking about Dick Cheney <laughs> you know so you may well have the time and the capacity to make an informed decision about this. So just think about that. They want to say no. <laughs> I don't care how lucid you are. I don't care how much you're in your right sound mind body. It's not your decision to make. I mean, what is wrong with these people? Michelle. What? Well, but a Negro is more plentiful and cheaper than a cat. What would you call it? <laughs> I'm unique. <laughs> so am I. And you're a and a Dwina. And Joe, my man. Yeah. Is a <laughs> well, what they're saying is black lives don't matter. That's yeah. it, Adwina. That's it. Better yeah. believe it, Adwina. A woohoo for you, girl. That's exactly what it means. Incredible. I mean, unethical and breaches of yes. just human rights. That's right. Yes. You had no boundaries. That's, that's it, girl, right there. You have to give people boundaries, though. That's why we're here, so people can listen and think and learn. So they will know how to use or help others to use boundaries. Like, ask me, do I want you to cut me from ear to ear? Right. <laughs> right. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yes. Ask them. Then you kill them. Yes. Yes. You want the right to die or not. Yes. That's it. You know, but they, they 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 can't seem to let go of this idea that they own black bodies. It's really I don't know, girl. You might have to go down to Texas and gather those two gangs together and have a meeting and take out our <laughs> <nine> people <laughs> <laughs> and casually. Go sit down in the back of your truck 
and take your iPad and text your old lady and say, how you doing? <laughs> Uh, and casually get in the cop car. The sniper's on top of the roof having coffee. The police are standing down there with their guns like their statues. And everybody's sitting mm. around to be arrested. <laughs> okay? I don't know where I am. Huh? <laughs> you I, can't be I, 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 did not, I did not see the tank truck. I didn't see the National Guard. I didn't see the Air Force. I didn't see Marines. And then if they had some kind of piece of water there, I would have seen the Navy. It was, no. a, it was two gang black ones. But they weren't thugs. No law, they, had been, no law had been broken. It was just some, some good old boys having a meeting. A <laughs> they meeting. got a little hot. <laughs> some people Look died. <laughs> Nine people did it. They jumped in front of the bullets. Hey, they jumped in front of the bullets. Nobody could really shot. All right, Georgia. That's my this adventure. Yes. But let that have been two black gangs. They'd have been mm -hmm. thumped. Everybody would have been there, and they'd be having a ground shooting through the head, throwing all kinds of shit on them. But no, when you're from Texas, you ain't got to worry about. It. We just have a meeting. It didn't turn out well. <laughs> Nine men down. Don't worry yourself. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I had to get that out. It's been bothering me for days. I have to get that out.